Hello everybody, my name is Kirsty Partridge and welcome to the Realistic Drawing in Charcoal Workshop. Now this workshop contains four different parts. In the first part, I'll be going through materials and basic techniques that you'll need to know for this workshop. In the second part, we'll be putting those techniques into practice with our first drawing, which will be a flower study so you can get used to the different techniques. In the third part, I'll be going through an animal study and I'll be going through specific tips on how to render realistic animals, for example, the fur. And then in the final part, I'll be going on to drawing a full portrait so you can see how to draw things like the skin and the hair. If you wanna see how I created this drawing in real time, then it is available over on my Patreon, along with over 300 other real time tutorials that you can access for just a small amount per month. For each real time tutorial, there will be the full narration and also all of the references, sketch outlines and materials list you need to follow along with the tutorials yourself. But if a monthly membership isn't right for you or you just want to focus on improving your charcoal drawing skills, then over on my website, I've got lots of different courses to help you master charcoal drawing. I've got a course on there for drawing portraits in charcoal, also drawing animals in charcoal and still life objects in charcoal. But if you really want to improve your skills, you can get all three of those courses in my drawing bundle. And if you are interested, in my courses you can get 15% off if you use the code save15 at checkout so I really recommend checking out that drawing bundle and I'll leave a link to my course website and to my patreon in the description below so let's get straight into part one where I'll be going through the different materials I'll be using throughout the workshop as well as the different properties of the materials so that you can pick the best supplies to suit your needs now, firstly, let's go through the paper. I have picked three different papers from Strathmore that I think are really great for this workshop. Me personally, I'll be using the 300 series Strathmore Bristol vellum surface paper. I like this one because it's got a nice texture. It's not their Bristol smooth paper, which isn't great for charcoal because if you have something too smooth, then the charcoal simply can't stick to it. You need a decent amount of tooth, which is why I picked these three papers because I think they're great and they've got a really nice texture to them. So also this is a really nice heavy paper. It is a hundred pounds, which is great. I really love a thicker paper. And the final thing that led me to choose this one is it's got more of a white tone to it. Whereas these two are a little more warm tone and I personally prefer a paper that's got more of a bright white tone to it. So that is great if you're a beginner and you're on a budget because it is the cheapest paper here. Then I have the 400 series heavyweight drawing paper. This is great because it's also very thick, 100 pounds, and it's got a great texture because it's their heavyweight drawing paper. So it's got a medium surface. It is cream toned, so it has got that more yellow tone to it. So if you don't mind that, then this would be a great paper for you. And finally, we've got the 500 series charcoal paper. So this is specifically catered for charcoal drawing and it has got a lot more texture to it. Here you'll see a clip of the different textures of the paper side by side and you can see that this paper has got a lot more texture to it. So if you like having more texture in your charcoal drawings and you have a little more money to spend then this would be a great one for you. The difference between this and these two as well as texture is also the thickness of the paper. It is a lot thinner, it's £64 rather than £100. So that's personally why I'm not using it for this workshop because it's a little too thin for me. Now let's talk about the pencils that I'll be using in this workshop. For my charcoal drawings I only ever use two charcoal pencils and actually a charcoal block as well for larger areas. So you don't need a massive range of pencils for this which is really great especially if you're on a budget. So I like to use a 2B charcoal pencil which would be this one here. So I am using the pencils from the Lyra charcoal set. So this is a 2B pencil and this is great for your shadows. So the 2B pencil will be a very soft charcoal pencil. And then for the mid-tones, so the slightly lighter values, I'll be using their H charcoal pencil. So the difference between these two pencils is that one's the H and one's the 2B. So the H pencil is a lot harder, the lead is a lot harder, and it's a lot lighter in value, which means it's great for details because it's got that harder lead. 
and it's also good for those lighter tones because the value isn't as dark. Now the 2B is a lot softer, so it's good for shading in areas if you don't need to do lots of detail, so it's good for that. And it's good for those darker values because it is a darker charcoal as well. Now pencils can be tricky to cover large areas. It can be very time consuming if you have a large area that you wanna shade in and you're just using a small pencil. So that is why I also like to use these charcoal blocks. They're a lot easier to shade in large areas very, very quickly. So from this set, I am using the larger block. You can see that we've also got this smaller one, but that would be too small. So I'm going for this larger block here, and this is also a 2B value. So that is it for the pencils and the actual charcoal. There's a couple of other things that are key to your charcoal drawings as well. For example, erasers. I'll be using the kneaded eraser here, which is great for those softer highlights, or if you just wanna lift up the value a little bit if you've got it a bit too dark. And then I've also got a stick eraser, and this is so important for my charcoal drawings. It is the Tombow Mono Stick Eraser, and it's great because the eraser is very, very tiny, so it's not only good for erasing areas or mistakes, but also for creating really detailed highlights and really cool textures in your charcoal work. So I love using the Tombow Mono Eraser, but any stick eraser will do. Also for blending, from this set I will be using the blending stump that's included in this set and this is great for blending out areas, especially small details because it's very, very small at the end so it's great for those details but also if you want to add and darken up values you can use this blending stump as well. And the final supply that I will be using from this set is the sharpener to sharpen my pencils. Now that is all of the supplies that I'll be using from this set, but there are a couple of other supplies that I'll be using to blend. So let's go through them now. So I've also got two other blending tools. Firstly, I've got a paintbrush, and this is the Adela Rowney Aquafine paintbrush. And this I think is meant for watercolors, and this is the size four. And what you'll need is basically just a fluffy round brush. And what I'll be using this for is to actually blend out the charcoal. Brushes are surprisingly really good for blending out charcoal and for adding value using charcoal powder. So I'll be using that and I'll show you in a minute how to use that technique. And then for blending out larger areas, for example, in the portrait section of this workshop, when we blend out skin, I like to use tissue a lot because this really does blend out the charcoal. It gets rid of any graininess that you can see and gives a really lovely smooth finish. So that is all of the supplies that I'll be using in this workshop. Now let's go through the basic techniques and how I'll be using each of these supplies. Okay, so I'm gonna start off really simple and just go through how I'll be shading using my charcoal pencils. So when I'm shading, I like to go either in circular motions or using a hatching method. And I like to keep it really, really light and try to keep my pressure nice and even because you don't want certain strokes to be light and then have some more pressurized strokes which will show through when you're blending. You wanna try and keep everything really smooth and really even. So I try to hold the pencil a little bit to the side so that I'm not using the direct point of the pencil because it's easier to get a lighter pressure if you hold your pencil slightly on the side and also hold your pencil further back. When you hold your pencil towards the front and use the front of the, the pencil, the point, then it's a lot harder to get really light pressure. So keep your hand a little bit further back and hold it more on the side angle. So I like to go in little circular motions. This is good when I'm doing the skin. I like to be nice and slow as I do this. You will see the paper texture showing through because the pencil is just reaching the top texture of the paper. It's not getting down into all of the dips and valleys. But that's fine because when we blend it out, everything becomes nice and smooth. I also like to rotate my pencil so that it wears down evenly and so I won't have to sharpen it as much. And you can see when I rotate the pencil, it's a bit sharper on that side that I then rotate to, so it gets into those dips a bit better. Okay, 
or I'll be using the hatching method where I'll be going in lines and building it up like that next to each other. You can see that this also gives a really nice smooth texture. This is a bit more difficult because you have to make sure every single pencil stroke you're doing with the same amount of pressure for it to look nice and smooth. So just practice doing this and getting to grips with how much pressure you need to apply and try and do this all the way across until you get a really nice, even consistency. And these techniques, even though they look easy, do take a bit of practice. In some areas, I may be doing a cross hatching method where again, I will be going in one direction and then crossing over it in another direction to help build up more intensity. The way I like to do it is instead of building up more shadows by going with more pressure. Instead, I like to build up a darker value by going in different directions and building up layers rather than applying lots of pressure like this, which I will do in certain areas for details and to get really dark values. But most of the time I will just add lighter layers, but go in different directions so that the charcoal grips onto all of the dips all of the valleys and all of the two for the paper. See, I'm switching my direction and you can see it's slowly building up to an intensity that's the same as this, but I didn't have to press hard on the paper at all. And that means that it's less ache on your wrists as well. So now that I've gone through some tips on how to do the basic shading and a couple of things to avoid doing, let's go through how to use this charcoal block because this can be tricky to use. So firstly, the way that I hold this is I put two fingers on the side and then rest one on top to help guide me. And then I just use the front surface of the charcoal block and I just start to go and shade however I want to. I normally go in lines rather than going in circular motions, but you can do that as well. But normally I just go over and holding it on the front here helps to control where you want that charcoal block to go. Rather than just holding it to the side, it's a lot harder to control as you can see and you get lines that are more stubborn because it's easier then to apply more pressure on one side than another because you're not controlling it. So instead of just holding it like that and trying to go in where it won't be as smooth and consistent, make sure you're resting a finger on the top. And that really helps to keep everything nice and consistent because you have an even pressure across the whole surface of the charcoal block. Earlier I mentioned there are certain points in this workshop I will be using a paintbrush to blend my charcoal. So let's go through how exactly I'll be using this technique. Firstly, I'm gonna apply a little bit of shading using my charcoal pencil, using the same method that I just went through, this time going in circular motions, holding the pencil nice and far back. And so when I blend out with my brush, I just go in circular motions over the top. And you can see that it fills in all of those little dips with a bit of the charcoal. So that we've got a nice value across the whole area and we've got no grain, white grain of the paper showing through. So you can see a little bit of texture of the pencil, the graininess showing through. So this doesn't give you the smoothest result, but it's a great way to blend everything out and to fill in all of the white areas. Now, quite often I will use the brush to first just blend everything out, give it a once over, and then I go in with a bit of tissue just to soften it out even more and get rid of even more of that graininess. So let's go through how I do that. When I use tissue, I like to wrap it around my finger to help me have more control. And again, I go in circular motions. Now don't worry because the paper, the tissue will crumble a little bit. So you may think that it's crumbling your paper, but it's not, don't worry, it's just the tissue. And every now and again, I will switch over to a clean bit of tissue 
and you can see how that has softened it out even more and you can hardly see any of the graininess showing through. So that is how I would use the tissue, just going in circular motions and I'll use this a lot to soften out the skin. Once again, I'm just gonna do another swatch and this time I'm gonna use the blending stump to blend this out. So when you use the blending stump, make sure you're going in circular motions and this is really good because it keeps the value nice and dark and it does the same thing that the brush does. It fills in all of that white graininess and gives you a really nice even value. I love using this for small detailed areas, but for example, if you were doing a large area of skin, this isn't the best tool to use because of the fact that it will take you so long and it makes it harder to get a nice, smooth, even layer of shading and blending. It's much easier to do it with a brush and a tissue for large areas, but for small details, for example, eyelids around the eyes, contours of the nose, this is really, really handy. And as you can see, it gets rid of the graininess completely and it gives a really nice finish. However, even though the blending stump can give you great results, it doesn't work well if you do the back and forth motion, which I see a lot of beginners do. So if you go back and forth as you blend out, then what will start to happen is that you'll get start and stop points. And I see a lot of beginners do this when they're just trying to go and blend out everywhere. And what start and stop points look like is you can see that we've got some lighter shading, but where I've stopped, it's a little bit darker. And that's because when I stop, you're stopping here, which adds a bit of shading, and then you're going back on it, which adds a second layer. So the edges start to look darker. And that's what happens when you do that back and forth motion and that will end up giving you dirty, messy blending and it just doesn't look good or realistic. So keep to using circular motions because when you're going in circular motions, you're not stopping and starting, but don't go back and forth. Now that I've gone through some basic tips for shading and also blending out your charcoal, another thing that I'll be doing a lot is adding highlights and detail using my erasers. So like I said, I will be using the kneaded eraser to create subtle highlights or to lift up the value of a larger area. And I will be using my Tombow Mono Eraser for those tiny details because this is a stick eraser and to create some texture as well in my drawings. Firstly, let's go through some tips on how I'll be using my stick eraser. So I've just created two rough square shapes and I'm gonna fill one in completely with charcoal. And I know that I want the middle of this square to be highlighted. So I know I wanna add a highlight to the center of this square. So the first one that I've done, I've gone in and I've shaded in the whole area without thinking about preserving my highlight. So what happens with this is that when I'll go and blend it out using my paintbrush, so I'll blend it just to soften everything out. So now I've blended it out. Now if I was to go in with my eraser and try and create a highlight, a little circle in the center, it does show up, but because we've added in that charcoal directly to this area at the start, we haven't just got to lift up what we shaded on with a brush, which is actually very easy to remove but we've also got to remove the direct charcoal that we added onto this area. Whereas now let's use a slightly different technique. I am going to be shading in the square, but I'm going to leave free the circle that I want to be nice and highlighted. Now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna blend this whole area out again, and I am gonna let some of the charcoal go onto the highlighted area. Now the only difference between these two is that firstly I applied direct charcoal onto where I wanted the highlight and in the second one I didn't. But I still let the brush brush over some charcoal onto the highlighted area because it's very hard to completely preserve that highlight. That is why I like to lift them up after with an eraser. But now when I go in with this eraser, you'll see that it's easy to lift off that little bit of charcoal that was dusted on there by the paintbrush and you get a much brighter highlight. And that is because there's no direct charcoal directly shaded onto this area, only a bit brushed on by the paintbrush. So those are all of the materials that I'll be using throughout this workshop, as well as all of the basic techniques that you need to know in order to work on the drawings in the next parts. 
So make sure that you give all of these techniques a practice so that you're ready for the next part where we'll be putting them all into practice. So I'll see you all in part two. Bye everybody.